Hi everybody, I'm Devin Townsend and I'm in Da Belly. Da Belly. I'm in Da Belly. Da Belly. Da Belly. No longer am I though. Bye. Sarah here with Debelli, and I am here with Devin Townsend. Congratulations on the four albums you've released this year. Thanks. You must be exhausted. It's not even exhausted. I'm just, um, I'm just uh, looking to, to like stop thinking for a while. But I actually feel pretty good. Okay. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the Ziltoid Frisbee? The Frisbee, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, I think there's uh, certain merch elements that um, we try and incorporate, and a lot of them are without my knowledge, and the Frisbee was without my knowledge, but I haven't even seen one yet. Oh, is it soccer or is it cool? No, it's awesome. Yeah, it's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you should have this old toy frisbee game. That's right, yeah, yeah. We need to think of a game. Like, there's got to be some sort of obscure rules to, you know, yeah. Ziltoidian frisbee. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've been at this music game for quite some time now. Do you know how many songs you've released total? Well, I think including all the box sets and uh, everything I've done, we're upwards towards 28 or 30 records. So if you figure you know, 10 songs at least, it's like 300 songs or something. Most of which I don't remember. I mean, I think it's funny, uh, we're trying to put together a set and the band is like, well, why don't we try this song, why don't we try this song? I'm like, I don't remember how this goes at all. But I mean, I think the thing is, for me, once I finish recording something, I have no real desire to hear it after because it's based on, you know, purging uh, a certain energy that existed at a certain time in my life and then once it's done it's you're able to objectify it by listening to it or looking at the artwork and I actually tried to listen to some of the older stuff the other day I was putting together something for a friend and I had to listen to some of it and it's the memories of the experiences that that draw the music out are usually so vivid that I, it's not a pleasurable experience you know when you listen back you're like oh god that was that and it was this, and that was this and that, and I think uh, a great catalyst for music is often um, misery. So when you listen back to a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff, you're just like, oh God, no, I'm good, you know. Oh, well that, that's awesome, because I was gonna play a game with you well, to see on. how well uh, you go know on. your own see. music. <laughs> see. So, right. if it's gonna be the first 10 seconds of the song, if you can name the song title and album. Sorry okay. to make you go through this. No, that's cool, <laughs> actually. Yeah, it's Deadhead. Yeah, it's Deadhead from Accelerate Evolution. I was in Korea. Um, I uh, had to figure out the uh, difference between lust and love, I think, during that period. And it was a uh, uh, lesson in violence. Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense with the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> There's Love Load. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's Love Load from the Christine EP. That was uh, in 1998, and um, I wrote that in the middle of the night uh, after uh, a fit of anger towards somebody. It's all based on love, I think, all these songs. <laughs> but, uh, but that one was... Uh, I, I think there's a difference between altruism and, and, and sincerely doing something for people because it's the right thing to do. And I think that at that point, um, you know, psychedelic drugs and things like this, I put myself in a position where I felt like I was being a martyr, but I was doing it for the sake of attention. And then when I finally realized what I was doing, I wrote that effectively to say, okay, this is fucking stupid. This is ridiculous. And just to sort of burn it. And that's what that song was meant to represent, was to sort of clear the slate. Earth Day. Yeah, Earth Day. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit biased. I can pretty much, I'm probably going to be able to get most of these. I would hope so. But I mean, uh, Earth Day was from Terrier. Uh, it was the one song on the record that I wasn't super happy with the mix because there was a 3.5K spike that uh, I think was a result of the compression, but it kind of got ironed out in mastering. That song was written... Um, uh, 
it was a really depressive period, um, and I think it was because at that point I had been put on to like antidepressants and antipsychotic medication, uh, and uh, I didn't necessarily think it was appropriate. So I think that the lyrics have a level of despondency to it that uh, when I hear it, uh, I'm like, all right, that. The one thing about Earth Day is it's too long. There's a bunch of songs that I listen to and I'm like, oh, it's too long. This is too much, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that um, that sort of the, that level of self-indulgence needed to happen at that period, though. It was mm -hmm. it was nice to be able to be like, what well, does matter if it's too long? Okay. Yeah. And then we'll just do one more. Sure. Uh, one of my <laughs> Thing beyond things. Yeah, yeah. Ocean Machine. I was last on that record. Um, that was written and recorded before the Steve Vai. Um, and it was written in the studio because there was a new effects unit that had that reverb effect. And so I wrote it there and just uh, went from there. The lyrics are really like adolescent stuff. That's like stuff I wrote when I was like a kid. Like between, really? yeah, 15, 18 years They're old. Beautiful. Well, thanks. Yeah. But I think it was, um, when I listen back to a lot of that stuff, Ocean Machine's got some moments on it that I'm really, uh, I really still think are valid. But there was a thing that I did like on the sort of demos on some of the Ocean Machine stuff that was just like hyper emotive in the way that I would like enunciate words with like breaths and things like that that I'm uncomfortable listening to now. That was that being one of them. But uh, that song seems to be something that resonates with people. And again, I haven't heard Ocean Machine in probably 20 years. No, maybe less, 15. Yeah, but I think it's healthy. I think that like if somebody is 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 consistently listening to what they create. For me, the music is, is really of very little importance. The thing that's important is what what um, uh, the intention was in doing it, because I think that I have a very uh, low level of emotional intelligence, and so it's very difficult for me to articulate myself in any way other than like analysis, mm -hmm. but emotionally I'm really vacant. So the way that I can express it and it's always been the trump card has been through music so I find that I will have gone through something and will be um, psychologically absent from it but then when I start writing it it comes out and in that sense the music acts as uh, like an exhaust valve rather than my primary focus so if a period of time requires really silly stuff or really cheesy stuff or really self-absorbent stuff or, or what have you it's it's that's what has to happen as opposed to thinking, oh, I don't know if this is going to sell properly, if this is going to be something that is going to be the most resonant with people. It's like, no, 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 well, that's, that's what it is. It's yeah. what happened. And then after it's done, I can usually sit back and listen to it and say, like, oh, okay, that's what you're feeling. You were upset. You were angry. You were sad. You were heartbroken. Any of these things, it's all easier. And then you move on. Hmm. So I think that's why when you listen back to it, you're just like, oh, good Lord, like, we were already there. Wow. You know, this has already been sorted to go back and listen to somebody like, you know, screaming to the heavens for something like this. You're just like, oh, fuck, get over it, you know? <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about how the, when you're at, at Bakken, the huge metal hug, yeah. what that meant to you then? A happy accident. I think that was more than anything else. It, it's, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't go into many things with a plan or a real solid agenda. I just kind of just, Go. I think in the past that's why it led me to decisions like with Alien and Infinity and things like that because I was taking drugs or I was drinking or I was experimenting with relationships that were unhealthy and things like that but intentionally so just to sort of see what would happen you know what would happen if you put this into your process and then it, you end up with something that's paranoid or you end up with something that's delusional or, or what have you right so now it's been eight years, seven and a half years since, you know, I've, my mind is clear. So when I uh, work on autopilot, whether or not it's being on stage at Vakken or, or writing or, or riffing on stage, I, I, I think I can trust, I know I can trust myself mm -hmm. that even if what I say is offensive, it's not uh, coming from a place that I think is like um, truly, uh, um, you know, misogynistic or racist or, uh, uh, um, sadistic in any ways, you know? Yeah. But I think with Vaca, it was just another thing. I was just like, there's a bunch of dudes. Why do you guys hug each other? And they did. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and they did. And, and I remember just thinking, like, wow, it fucking worked, yeah. you know? But there's a lot of times where the same thing happens and it doesn't work. 
Yeah. You're just like, how about everybody, you know, square dance? And everybody's like, no. <laughs> Uh, so on a, a little bit of a, a funny note, um, I was watching an interview with you where you were talking about asparagus. Yeah, it makes and the smell bad. How do you know that about female pea and asparagus? Well, it's it's not just females. It's 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 um, uh, what I'd heard is that <laughs> after uh, some women have children, there it's not the urine that smells. Apparently, it always smells, but uh, something with the hormonal change uh, with some women who aren't privy to the smell of asparagus urine after having kids they are so you know interesting sure. fact and do you know why you know that because i have uh no life <laughs> and i watch nerdy science programs no i mean honestly i mean i've been married for so long right and you know it's like yeah. it's well, yeah. You know, <laughs> Divorce, sex, so. <laughs> sexy nighttime includes, you know, someone yelling facts at you while you're trying to read, right? So. Yeah, that's, that's the good foreplay. <laughs> uh, so you have Nam coming up. Are you? Uh, I heard that as my friend Rebecca that said that. I think I, that was such a great quote. Like after a certain amount of time being married, that's that's what it is, right? It's yeah. like I'm just gonna try and read. Do you know <laughs> that you know urine smells after, and it's like yeah, that's true. And then you committed to memory so well we learned something today yeah it's probably inaccurate well we'll wikipedia it in the right, whole. Right. <laughs> uh so nam yeah coming up are you who are you going to be uh representing at nam this year oh i've got a ton of people it's uh 25 years of this shit i mean after a while they uh they uh i like that quote i think it was woody allen he says if you keep showing up eventually they just hold a chair for you and now all these companies are giving me yeah. gear it's great. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't buy gear anymore. Well, I do. I'm, I buy. I bought some today. But um, yeah. All these companies give me gear, and a lot of it's really good. So I go down to Nam and I pimp stuff for people. Mm -hmm. But I mean, ultimately, I think it's funny too because what I write with at home is, you know, I have a Telecaster and mm -hmm. an amp or an acoustic guitar. Like I don't need the stuff that I have really. But it certainly helps um, my professional world, like DTP and a lot of the other things that I'm doing. It's the industry is turned in such a way that there's not a lot of revenue or advertisement budgets from labels in the ways that there once was. So being able to uh, endorse things and be the face of products that you have a use for, it's a good sort of two-way street for advertisement for my work and you know putting a face to their stuff right? is there anything that you would like to add or anything else that we're going to be looking forward to in 2015 There's or so holiday much. plans actually yeah do you get relaxed ever <laughs> no i mean I, I find i'm most relaxed when i'm on my own um you know i uh I kids and life and you know i'm happiest when i'm on my own okay. it's not that i wouldn't do anything for my family which i would but i mean i uh I find the social things, unless I'm ready for them, like interviews or touring or whatever, I find it to be, uh, it just saps me, yeah. you know, and I, I hate going to shows, I hate going to parties, I don't drink, I, you know, it's, so my idea of like being relaxed is if everybody leaves for a week, <laughs> you know, which doesn't happen, but um, what have I got coming up? I've got a ton of things, I'm going to do an orchestra project where I sing so it's Sinatra stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I love your cover of Frank Sinatra, yeah, too. We're, but it's going to be like with the orchestra and do like White Christmas and all that sort of stuff. And like really like that sort of Rat Pack era. Oh, my God. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm stoked on that. And then um, I got this other thing. I, and I haven't quite sussed out what it's going to be, but it has a lot to do with things just exploding. I can't. The other night I was just sitting in a hotel and I couldn't find anything to eat. But it was just Burger King, and Taco Bell. And there was a liquor store and there's pawn shop and it was just you know and it's like everything smelled like brute and farts and I was just like and I just and the only thing I could think of was just the sound of just just a devastating bass guitar and things exploding with a choir singing <laughs> in like some weird language and then so there's that and then uh that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it could be actually. And then um, DTP, we're working on stuff slowly because that, it's a healthy scenario. Mm -hmm. Casualties, I'm doing more. I start writing with Che again. We've got a good thing going between her and I. That was an amazing album. Yeah. my topic 2014.
Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank I like you. how you tied the two together. Built that's it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. it. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the thing with, with casualties is that was a record I haven't had the experience of being able to be as um, uh, unfettered while writing as I have, or as I, as I was with casualties. I haven't had that experience since the beginning because no one gave a shit. It was not like DTP or Ziltoid where there's parameters that are even subconsciously imposed by people's expectations or lack thereof. But with casualties, I was like, hey guys, I'm doing a sort of ambient country thing. And everybody's like, I don't care. So I was like, great. So I spent four years making it. By the time it was done, it was something that was just for me, you know, and Che and Morgan and the other people involved. But it was a real liberating experience. And now the next casualties, I think, is going to be very different than that. I think it's going to be a lot dirtier and a lot um, more live and a lot uh, more of a of a different era of rhythms cool. right yeah. and uh i think that because the period in which i've been existing here for the past couple of months has been in flux i don't know who i am right now i don't know where i'm at i don't know what i'm feeling you know i have a hard enough time with that as it is but recently i am just sort of being obstinate about it i asked myself how are you doing i'm like i don't know I don't fucking care, which is not true, but it's the defense right now that comes out. So, so I think that once the smoke clears, I get a chance just to go to the beach or something for a week. I'll have a much better idea. There's an element of anger in there, but it's not, um, it's not directed at anything. I think it's just irritation, you know, looking for release in some way. Maybe just making exploding sounds with basses will will work. <laughs> I appreciate this. You're an amazing musician, and so I thank you for everything that you've done. It's yeah, an awesome. Thank you very much for this, sir. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add or? Honesty, Tourette's is really not great for job preservation. Hey, Dev, you fucking idiot. Oh well, you know, I'd rather be. Uh, uh, I'd rather fail for being honest than succeed for being full of shit. So, I don't know who I am right now. You're Devin. Thanks. <laughs>